Greetings to you all. My name is Dr. Foxweed, and today we shall discuss the famed duel between Paris and Menelaus in the Iliad. It is book three of the poem, and the Greeks and Trojans are preparing for battle, a weary after many years of the siege of Troy. But one man arrogantly thought he could surpass them all. A prince Paris of Troy decided to challenge the best Greek warrior in single combat. Unsurprisingly, it was King Menelaus who stepped up for the challenge, as he was baying for the blood of the man that stole his wife from him. This was enough to disturb Paris deeply. He shrank away in fear at this terrible sight, like a man facing a snake. But his brother Hector told him to stop being such a damned coward, and Paris had no choice but to face his mortal enemy in single combat. It was officially agreed then. The winning side would keep Helen and end the war once and for all. To confirm all of this, King Agamemnon declared the terms to both sides and sacrificed three lambs. Violating oaths in ancient Greece was seen as a crime against the gods, and wrongdoers could risk severe divine punishment. To protect the peace terms, then, both the Greeks and Trojans offered wine to be mixed together in a single bowl, and this wine acted as a sort of blood curse against any side that dared to break the oath. Once it was mixed and poured, the Greeks and Trojans murmured among themselves a prayer. Stel kudista megiste, kaiatana toi teo alloi, o poteroi proteroi, Uperhokia pe menean. Hode spain kepelos, kamadis reo hos hode oinos. Auton kai tekeon, alokoi da loisin da meian. O Zeus, the greatest and noblest, and the other immortal gods, may whichever side that first acts violently against the oath have their brains flow to the ground as this wine does, both for them and their children and may their wives be conquered by other men. Dueling scenes in Homer are famously brief, and in most cases only a couple of blows are exchanged at a maximum. The skill of Menelaus was not up for question, but the Trojans did not seem to have much faith in Paris. He was a skilled archer, but not one for close combat. Even his father, King Priam, had to leave before the battle began to avoid seeing his son get defeated. Paris would make the first move, casting his first spear at Menelaus, but it merely struck his shield. Menelaus' spear would meet a similar fate. Undeterred, Menelaus stalked Paris with his sword and clashed it against his helmet, but to his rage it broke uselessly. Furious Menelaus yelled to the sky, Steu pataru tis seio, teion oloorteros allos. Father Zeus, there is no god more ruinous than you. Enraged that Zeus had abandoned him, Menelaus seized the plume of Paris's helmet and dragged the hero towards the Greek army, almost strangling the cowardly prince in the process. Nonetheless, Menelaus would not have his victory. His struggles were in vain. They had drawn the attention of Aphrodite, the goddess who was firmly on the side of the Trojans. Descending to the battlefield, she whisked Paris back to his palace. At the hands of the gods, the duel between Paris and Menelaus was ultimately a stalemate. The Iliad would not end in the third book, and nor would the Trojan War. Class dismissed.